basketball fans, it's that time of the week again. Your time to chop it up and break it down with some of your favorite basketball minds. This is The Hangout, and I am Akil Augustine, coming to you from the Toronto Raptors store, powered by Real Sports, inside of the Air Canada Center. Let's get into it, of course. The man, the myth, the legend, Dwayne Sweets Watson, the guy whose face is all over those My North oh, promos gosh. when you turn on your television. My main man is, of course, back on the couch for another great episode, rocking that purple and gray Jordan Fleece. I see you, son. If it was a couch, I'd be on the couch. Well, no, I'm, I'm still going to back on the couch. We've graduated. We've graduated. He's on the stool. It's a metaphor. It's a metaphor. Okay. Uh, you guys better know who that the well-dressed man in the middle is. That is... Of course, the N former NCAA slam dunk champion, Gary Durant, and a member of the Top Gun family from birth. Thank you so much for coming out and supporting. Anytime. My pleasure. All right, Ed, we love Canadian basketball. We love <laughs> Canadian sports. We love the whole country, and we want to get the whole country out. So we got Montreal repping Adam Reed, yes. executive producer and host of Reed Between the Lines, straight out of Montreal. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for having us. Thanks, thanks for, for coming on, on the fake couch. It's all good. It's all good. Good to be with the boys, talk some basketball. All right, it should be a lot of fun. You want some love? I got it. All right, okay. Some love. I got it. <laughs> Let's get into it. We're not going to talk about the Montreal NBA team simply because. Oh, that's right. Because they. Oh, 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 that's right. Okay, that's <laughs> well, your we little talk job, right? The Toronto right. Raptors. How the Leafs doing, by the way? Uh, okay, yeah, I was okay. just asking. All right, I'm the wrong guy. Toronto Raptors, though, guys. Of course, 14 and five. The big game against Utah. 123 to 104 was the final score, but the real story, Kyle Lowry went nuts in Utah. Yeah. 39 points, a career high. The dude shot above 50% from the field, too, so that was very key. We're going to take you to the highlights, but your impressions of what this group did going two of three on the road. I know we're all disappointed by the L.A. matchup, but you're without your main superstar, and you wrap up two wins on a Western Conference road trip. Adam. Well, there's no doubt that this team's deep. We know that for a fact. Uh, Kyle Lowry is for real. This, yes. this, he's here to stay, and he is here to play, and he's here to lead at the same time. He decided to come back here and be the man, and these are the types of statement games that we're looking at that showcase just how powerful he is, whether it's setting up plays, whether it's being confident, whether it's showcasing that confidence in the dressing room. Kyle Lowry is a huge, important part of this team, and last night, night manifested itself with a great performance and I, I can't wait to see Kyle Lowry in, in a full season see what he's be able to do every night it's magical every night he brings something to the table and I think he's an integral part of this team okay so here here's from the two of you is Kyle Lowry a legitimate contender for MVP votes especially after that 39 point performance at this juncture of the season yeah this is a little early for me to start having MVP discussions, of course. But hey, no, I but you pitched an MVP story on this show, so I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not sure what you're talking about either. <laughs> but I mean, based on this play, now he's playing like an all elite player, definitely MVP caliber. I felt like in the, in the Sacramento game, he was forcing it a bit with DeMar being out. But in the, the last game, the Utah game, he really let the game come to him, took the right shots, scored with abundance, and like as you said, he drives his team. Gary, your thoughts on for MVP me, possibilities? For me, absolutely. Like Sweet said, it's very early in the season. But if the season ended uh, last night, in my opinion, <laughs> if, we're, if MVP is based on a player's importance to their team, I think the Toronto Raptors are not where they are without Kyle Lowry. He's a very integral part of this team. Huge uh, impact on the yeah. team, for sure. Let's think of the numbers a bit more. Kyle Lowry having a fantastic season. I do believe he's sixth in the league in assisted turnover ratio. We've had a guy do well in that Jose Calderon before, but now this is showing some of the maturation of Kyle Lowry. Points, of course, he's doing it in a big way. The question I want to pose to our panel of experts is, have you ever seen a player make this big of a jump when he's pretty far into his career? Kyle Lowry, a guy who's been noted as a bad locker room guy in some scenarios, especially at Houston, not the greatest leader. But we're talking about a mid-level guy turning himself into an all-star, superstar, possibly MVP caliber. The only thing I can really compare is maybe Gerald Green, and he didn't even make that big of a jump, but he was a guy who made a similar jump. But have you seen anything like this before, guys? The, the learning curve for professional athletes is different in every single one, right? Yeah. And you know that firsthand. Everybody evolves in, at a different rate. To see Kyle Larry and how he's been able to mature and that learning curve that we've been able to showcase, as far as I'm concerned, I've never seen anything like it. Yes. As far as someone who can control the pace, who can contribute to the team, is in conversation for an MVP, uh, uh, award. This guy is is definitely somebody who brings a great dynamic to the team, but at the same time, somebody who struggles through a different style. You talk about being bad in the locker room. You talk about this attitude issue. You talk about him not necessarily being a team guy. Yeah. Finally, it seems like every time you see him with the ball, every time you see him in the dressing room, it feels like this is the place he wants to but be. Clearly, weird. he's coming back. But point, it's weird, right? though, because he was in Toronto. It's not like he just showed up in Toronto and turned into a superstar. He was here. He was like backing up Jose Calderon, and something happened in that like year and a bit where he turned into like his mind got right in his gameplay all the way to another level. Right. 
Well, for me, it's all about, it's similar to real estate. It's about location, 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 <laughs> and the people that are around you, yes. right? So I, I, have, I give a lot of credit to the coach, the coaching staff, obviously. There's something that's happened where Dwayne has installed in, in, in Kyle that you're my man. You're gonna, you gotta have that confidence. For me, when I'm around a coach who's supportive and shows confidence in me, yeah. I'm going to perform. I'm gonna go to bed earlier, because, you know, the expectations. And, and he passed up quite a bit of money in, in Miami and Houston to be that man, to be the go-to guy. And finally, he's been given that opportunity. And now we're seeing the fruits of that labor. Right or was now. it that so whole, when he almost got traded to New York? Yes. Could that have been a spark where he Ooh. said, you know, it like, it he was already playing well at that point, yeah. but then he put shouts, it to another level. Shouts out to the Knicks for not making that trade. <laughs> yeah. Now, in the time while DeMar's, I know a lot of this team's identity is DeMar DeRozan going to the free throw line in the fourth quarter. Who else has impressed you in what they've been able to do? I know they're leaning heavily on Kyle with the 34 minutes he's logging, but other guys are going to have to step up if you don't wear Kyle down. So who else has been impressive? I think Valanciunas for me has been the guy who's really stepped up. Uh, I was really, really curious to see how he was going to do in the offseason with Akeem Olajuwon training with him and see he's going to be an integral part. And he's probably the big, he will be the big, biggest or best big man in the league within a two-year span. Okay. He's, an integral, he's an integral, integral part of this team. More than DeMarcus Cousins? I, I think he has more raw potential. Tell I don't think he's there. No, but I think he's. Yeah. I, I think I think he's got more raw potential. I don't think he's there yet. Right, but okay. when you watch him play, especially with his offensive rebounds, he's got to he's got to post down. He's got to be able to give that opportunity to his team. And I think there's a lot of potential with Valanciunas. I'm very surprised that not only has he stepped up, but he's delivered on what people are expecting of him, and that's huge in professional sports. To me, I, I love Sweet Lou Williams. Yep. I think he's been everything here in Toronto. I mean. He's given us that depth where we never had before. A guy that can come off the bench and give you um, not only starter, but superstar He's type a plays. Too. Yes, he yeah. is. He's a clutch, knockdown guy that can make plays off a dribble, which we've never had. Yeah. We, I don't think we've ever had a guy. We've had superstars like Vince, but no one that can just, especially jump shots, long range jump shots. We've never had any player like that here. Off the dribble. You in my opinion. No, go ahead, go ahead. James Johnson. James Johnson. James Johnson. Well, not, we, we already know he's a shutdown defender, but he's actually given the team a lot of in, in offense in, in the absence of DeMar, which is good, and that's unexpected. So if you get, like, 12 points out of James Johnson and some great defense, the other night. See? Exactly. So, but it's, it's a complete team effort. Okay, Everyone yeah. stepped up. I'd like to throw out a name there, a guy who hadn't been playing his best basketball but was also a team guy, and then when DeMar went out, gave him an opportunity to step up. G. Ravis Vasquez, huge games from him over the last couple, little stretch, especially out on the West Coast. I think he's going to be a boom for this team. But we got to get to the awards. Your boy, Coach Casey Gary Durant. Yes. Coach of the month. Yes. How impressed are you with what he's been able to do this group? Or are you not impressed? I'm truly I impressed. Don't think I'm he's tremendously done. impressed. Uh, um, I think the, the management and the coaching staff has done such a phenomenal job. Um, shout out to the general manager, president. He's, he hasn't he's changed been his style. Phenomenal. He's done nothing exactly. different. No, but he's been phenomenal. He's stuck by Coach Casey, which I thought was big. Usually when people come in, they want to change things and well, get their well, people did, in. Did, did he stick by him, though? Because he could have just what This team was supposed to tank last year. So he could be like, I'll just let this guy run his contract. This team fizzles out. He gets to let go. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not saying he didn't believe in him, but mm -hmm. it wasn't like this team was trying to win last well, year. So it was earned, not given. But still, he had the opportunity to bring somebody else in. We yeah. know this business is about nepotism and friendships, relationships and all that. I think he stuck by him, and he st I'm so happy he did. The guy's doing a phenomenal job. I tend spot. to agree with you, though. I don't see much of a change. Nope. Uh, if you take line. a look at the nucleus of the players and the different guys who are coming in, and obviously Lou Williams and the impacts he's having, JJ, et cetera, it's, it's, it's funny because every time the team goes through a tough spell, it's the coach who eats the eat. But yet when the team does well, it's sort of, well, is it the players or is it the coach, right? And the coach right. never gets his fair share. Yep. With Dwayne Casey, what I, what I will do is I will give him one thing. He stuck by his plan. He stuck by his strategy. He stayed with it through yep. thick and thin. And he's, he hasn't budged. He's that's leadership. Hey, and that's we're going to with our plan. Our plan is to go to break right now. We'll come back. And when we return here on The Hangout, we got to break down that big matchup. Grizzlies, Rockets, of course. No Dwight Howard in the house. How did the Rockets fare? Find out on Hangout. <laughs>